Hey, it's Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And it is surprise video time. This is your daily double on Friday, which is not something I do often. The problem is that news dropped today and Primal ends in four days. And I have my calendar completely booked up before Primal ends. And I, I think it's important to get as much information to you as possible in order so that you can make an informed choice about how or what you want to do before the campaign ends. So effectively, uh, Saturday, I have my usual reviews and weekend review coming up. Uh, Sunday, I have have a live QA at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time that I already announced, and so that's going to be stuck there. Monday is the weekly roundup, which I could include, and I debated including this there, but it, I felt it would be lost in the greater video, and then by the time we hit Tuesday, it's too late. So, daily double time, Friday, and we have a video for Primal versus Monster Hunter World, the board game by Steamforge Games, because they just dropped a whole bunch of news around that. And before we continue, I do want to note that my earlier video today, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, is a video that I did with Luke Hector from The Broken Meeple, a bit of a collaboration, a bunch of rapid-fire reviews covering a whole variety of different games. I'll include a link down below. Make sure to check that out if you're interested. I just know that when you pop up two videos in one day, the first one can get lost a bit, and so I want to make sure that doesn't happen here. That said, let's jump into Primal the Awakening. So, or Primal the Awakening versus Monster Hunter World. For those who don't know, Primal the Awakening is a Monster Hunter battling game, clearly inspired by Monster Hunter, but being obviously not its own IP or whatever around it. This thing has been in development for years, been hinted, been teased, it hit Kickstarter, and day one, hit 1.4 million, I think it was 1.4, might have even been 1.5, within one day, within 24 hours, hit nearly 1.5 million, just showing how much of a community, how much of a hype, how much of everything they have spent building this up. Now, I am, well, I've done a bunch of videos on this campaign already, I've done a I've done a review for the game, I've done a how to play, I've done a gameplay with Quackalope, I have done a should you back it, I've done a whole bunch of content with the game because Primal is a game that I genuinely love. This is this is all primed to be my prime. This is prime, I think I've done it before, I keep saying that. This is primed to be my, my 2021 Kickstarter of the year, the most hyped game, the most excited I am about a game. It's early in the year, but make no mistake, I genuinely love this game. I love the card play, I love the short, accessible, hour-long sessions per, hour-long playtime per session. Uh, it does have a campaign, which is usually something that scares me off, but they have a full scenario book. It's one of the updates they actually gave. They have a full scenario book covering single shot adventures for every single one of the monsters you will have in this campaign. So they have they have that available if you're someone who prefers single shot adventures like myself. And I like this game enough that I plan on diving into the campaign and seeing how far I can get into it. Because at 11 to 15 missions per campaign, it doesn't scare me off. So I am incredibly interested in Primal. I like Primal a lot. And that will factor into my own decision. And to some extent, it should factor into yours as well. To some extent. We'll come back to that. Then we have Monster Hunter World. Now, Monster Hunter World, which I scrolled down too far, let's scroll back up. This is being produced by Steamforge Games. And I'm going to be doing a full comparison of every single detail throughout this video. And if I ever, if you ever see me glancing off to the sides, because I have a nice little spreadsheet, I'll include a link down to, not include, I'll include a, the details of that down below in the description in case you want to check it out. But basically comparing everything, what we currently know, what we can hypothesize, all that about the games, so that you can make a decision in the next four days. And understand, I'll tell you right now, I am all in on Primal and that's not changing in the slightest. What you want to do is a different conversation. It's not necessarily an either or. For some people, it will be. Both limited playtime, limited shelf space, limited budget. This will be an either or decision, which is why I'm putting this video out now so you can be as informed as possible. And I mean that both pro and con, by the way. This video may well make some of you who are backing Primal decide that you'd rather back Monster Hunter World. And I've also seen comments from people saying, oh, I just saw the prices of Monster Hunter World. I'm going all in on Primal. I didn't realize that they'd be so comparable. So meaning this can go either direction as far as pushing people towards backing Primal or pushing people away from backing Primal or just getting people hyped about Monster Hunter World while still backing Primal, which is the camp that I personally fall into myself. And so let's go through that. Monster Hunter World is going to be a similar Monster Hunter board game because it's, this is actually the IP of Monster Hunter. This is actually the gameplay of Monster Hunter or whatever, the IP of Monster Hunter, I don't know, the gameplay. And it's being done by Steamforge Games, who has a track record of doing uh, IP-based miniature heavy games in the past. And it's going to follow, to some degree, similar overlays of the gameplay. I'll link to an article by Dicebreaker where they cover some of the aspects of the gameplay, about the aspect that you're going to spend time hunting or finding the monster, then you'll finally tackle the monster, and then one to four players, that's not true, it's that up to four players, so I don't know if it's actually one or similar to Primal, it might be two hand touch or not, but up to four players, four characters will tackle that monster, going back and forth on a tactical grid to try to take down the monster based on a card play system. So far, sharing very similar tones to Primal. 
And similarly, both of these games do not have some epic narrative storyline, whatever it is. They do have storyline, but the basic genre of both of these games is going to be the fact that both of them involved hunting monsters, getting items, crafting gear, hunting more monsters, rinse and repeat. So they very much share the same rule. They very much share the same general overtones. They they have a lot in common. They share a whole bunch of monsters and a whole bunch of heroes, and your weapons are going to be your decks of cards, and you're going to be managing it that way. There's a lot of overlap in the basic link gameplay of the campaign. Before we go into a full comparison, let's just cover a few more updates about Primal the Campaign because since I last talked about it, Primal has added more things. I'm not doing a full dedicated video, at least not unless they release some drastic degrees of information or whatnot. But Primal basically has, they had, they had an incredibly solid start, like I said already. They had a ton of, of hype out the gate, which worked for them and against them. On the one hand, it's a massive, massive success. People want to be involved in it. On the other hand, it's a lot of money and their stretch goals were frankly okay because they weren't really stretch goals. They were daily unlocked that were going to be there all along. The problem is people expect to see huge success with huge amounts of extra content, and they didn't get that in, uh, initially, at least. Now, Primal, if we can scroll down to the stretch goals, if we can scroll down to the stretch goal reveal over here, somewhere here, over here. Here we have day one was new equipment, some new quests and new equipment. Day two was the uh, nightmare mode, which they are un they are releasing for some of the monsters, but not all of them. Day three is the hunt for Tarasco, which is where they release the first of two new monsters currently. I would suspect there's going to be a third, but I don't know that for sure. Day 4 was new mastery cards. Day 5 was another nightmare mode. Day 6 was uh, more mastery cards for another, sorry, another nightmare mode. Day 7 was Zcath unlock, so another monster. This is the second of two so far, but possibly three monsters. Day 8 was a new scenario, a new nightmare mode, uh, plus the lin linen finish on the cards, and the expedition mode expanded. Let's go ahead and actually look at day 8 and 9. So if we take a look at those. So, well, actually, let's open the community survey as well, because the community survey had this aspect in it where they, because of the fact that they've been trying to figure out how do we give back to the community in a way that ultimately rewards people for the amount of success we've had by giving more stuff for the game. And so they had people voting on different options from Sun Drop and All Miniatures, Additional Biome with Arch, Tome of Creatures, the Expanded Lore, Legendary Equipment, Nightmare Decks for every monster in the game instead of just some of them. Dials to track life points instead of tokens, uh, 3D terrain for some but not all the terrain, Neofin game at, and other. That's what the options that were on the table were. And what they did is they go ahead and go ahead to the next update. They started by saying we're going to put a bunch in, possibly more than three. We're going to try to do what we can. Some of them will be optional buys, some of them will be stretch goals, but potentially giving you more content. For myself, as a huge fan of Primal, I will take all of it. I'm interested in everything they put on the table. And so they started by revealing a nightmare deck, component upgrades, so linen finish on all the cards, and they expanded the expedition mode, which we referenced at the beginning. Of this video to include one-shot adventures for every single monster on the in the game as opposed to just most or many of the monsters so now every single monster in the game is going to have a single shot adventure so you can face off against that that monster and deal with it however you are however you want and that, by the way, like I said, is a huge plus to myself. Despite the fact that I intend to go through the campaign because I like this game enough, I don't know if practical reality will work for that, and I can tell you that I've only played single-shot adventures for Primal and have loved it so far. And then from there, they, add this, they added legendary equipment, and each legendary equipment is going to come with its own legendar legendary quest, so a, a yin and yang, so to speak, a balance to how you actually acquire that and what you need to do to acquire the extra additional equipment in the game, which again, more stuff. I am a fan of more stuff. There's more content being added to this game based on the time that I'm doing this video. By the time I'm done this video, they may well have update 12 or whatever it is, releasing more stuff. So keep your eyes peeled for Primal as to what else they are adding, but they have announced they are trying to add whatever they can. So those next four days may well factor into your decision, which speaking of which, make sure to subscribe to the channel and watch my Monday roundup video where rest assured I will cover whatever else they have added since me doing this video. And that's going to be what's going on with Primal. So Let's go through the comparisons, because we have this cool beast over here, this cool 3D render. Now factor in that however cool this Monster Hunter miniature looks from this angle, it looks significantly less cool when you look at it from this angle, because this is the same beast as that. It's just a question of angles. Now, in person, I don't actually know. I, I assume in person will be somewhere in the middle. Steamforge Games generally does produce pretty nice quality, quality miniatures. Now, renders are almost always, or actually always, renders are always better looking than miniatures, but Steamforge Games generally has a good track record with miniatures. Not perfect in all their games, but I would say they are above average in the miniatures they produce. But that is a cool miniature over there that's worth, worth paying attention to. 
And then, so let's scroll, scroll down through the pledge levels quickly. We'll do a quick overview of the pledge levels and then we'll do a full compare and contrast. So the entry pledge for Kingdom Death Monster is going to be as follows. $70, 56 euro, 51 pounds. Now keep in mind, shipping prices are not listed. Additionally, we do not know yet how they are handling that. Are they incorporating into the price? Are they adding? We don't know any of that yet. But at a baseline, the entry level pledge share is going to be $70, which gives you four monsters of the size XL. They have a few monster sizes. They have L, XL, XXL, and XXL. XXL, so four different monster categories in comparison to the two that Primal has, where they have monsters and then the super large monster. Then there's going to be four hunters, and then there's going to be 600 plus cards, one double sided board, one rule book, and one quest book for the game. That is your entry level pledge into the Monster Hunter world. Accessible, a lot less content, but hey, if you want to jump in at an accessible price point, that's a solid, solid entry. Knowing nothing about the gameplay yet, or minimal about the gameplay. The core pledge is going to be $140. That's twice the price, but for that, you get the large monster, which is smaller than the XL monsters. You get the seven XL monsters and compared with four, so you're getting eight total monsters, or nine total monsters, because you're getting an XXL monster and then you're getting the hunters or eight hunters, double the number of hunters, 1,200 cards, two double-sided boards, two rule books, two quest books, plus, of course, all unlocks. And that's worth mentioning over here. The entry pledge does not have the unlocks. So factor that in, or at least they didn't list it over here if it does. So if you want to get all those stretch goals, which is going to be a factor in this conversation, you're going to have to be pledging a minimum of $140. But again, still a cheaper entry point than Primal, all things considered. Primal's entry point is $169 before shipping or anything else. So that is what we have over there. And then we have the all-in pledge, which is going to be the main comparison point I'm going to be using because I think these are the biggest comparison. Primal's all-in versus Monster Hunter all-in. I think those are the biggest comparison points we have. And so we're going to have one, L one monster, seven XL monsters, three XXL monsters in contrast with the one that you get from this entry pledge over here. And then you're going to have one XXXL monster. Then they're going to have 12 hunters. So that's four more hunters than the core pledge. 1800 cards, two double sided boards, and eight rule books, quest books. Now, so looking at this at a glance, what's likely happening here is you likely have the core pledge plus all the optional buys that are being added the optional buy hunter pack, the optional buy XXL monster, the optional buy two extra XXL monsters. And all those will potentially come with different quest books and rule books or whatever it is. And so that's what's going on in this all in pledge. Basically, more monsters plus a hero pack, not that dissimilar to what we're seeing with Primal. And that's what you're getting over here. And again, gameplay wise, uh, I covered it briefly, but it's effectively going to be mostly the same as what we see from Primal. Uh, obviously, the gameplay is going to be very different, but the overlapping tones are going to be the same, while the individual gameplay is obviously going to vary. For instance, if you read both articles, and you could read both articles, I'm going to link to all this down below, but both from Monster Hunter World as well as from sorry, both from Steamforge games, as well as from Dicebreaker, you'll see they talk briefly about the gameplay, about the nature of the card row, but similar to what they had in Bardsung, they're going to have a, a card row with cards slowly activating as they come off the row, or at least seemingly that seems to be what they're describing here. It's which is interesting to me. I like I like card-based gameplay. I generally have. I like Dice, but I also like card-based based gameplay. One of the reasons I've really enjoyed Primal is the puzzle that is being presented as you figure out how to build your deck, manage your deck, upgrade your character, gear up, and then tackle the monster, which I've really enjoyed. I also like the primal board in the sense of how it manages to give you a lot of tactical decisions that aren't just ultimately coming down to run up to the monster and slash it. It's about the turning, the focus point, which has been both critiqued, but for myself, I really enjoy it. And so overall, that's what's going on with the thing. So let's start comparing. Let's start comparing. So to begin with, if you want a cheaper entry point, Monster Hunter World has you down. At $70, they're giving you an entry point into the genre without really anything else. Now, Primal does not have that entry point. Primal has an entry point of $169, which is not insignificant. So if you want to experience a game like this, then Monster Hunter World is going to be your best bet if you don't want to break that $100 threshold. For $70, you can get this game shipped likely and still be able to get under $100 and experience a Monster Hunter battler. That's number one, where Primal is going to, Monster Hunter World is going to win there. Overall price, Primal coming in at roughly $302 when you convert and Monster Hunter World coming in at $279 for that all-in pledge. Primal is still going to lose on the all-in pledge price. Now, again, this is price alone. We still got more to talk about. So price alone, Primal is going to win. Sorry, Primal is going to lose in that category. Monster Hunter World beats it out by a solid $30. That's before we talk about shipping, VAT, or anything else. Now, speaking of shipping or VAT, those are kind of neutral because we don't know anything about VAT from uh, Monster Hunter World. And as far as shipping, we don't have any shipping numbers. And it's still always just an estimate. So... 
Primal comes in at roughly, shipping's going to vary based on which region you're from, ranging from around $40 for that all-in to potentially much more, depending on which region where you are in the world. So shipping and that are basically unknowns where we can't do a fair comparison to the game. As far as heroes, the all-in for Primal is going to give you six heroes. The all-in for Monster Hunter World is giving you 12 heroes. That's another win in the Monster Hunter World category. In terms of just hero variety aside, again, we're not talking about the quality of the game at all yet. We will get to that. As far as monsters, this is where Primal starts to win, but but with caveats. And monsters, the all-in for Primal is going to come with 18 different unique monsters, plus one mega monster, plus the stretch goal monsters. So you're getting a ton of content over here. Let's see if we can scroll through them, some of them briefly. But you're getting roughly 19, we're well, at 21 monsters basically so far, and that currently, I'm trying to scroll through the update, I don't know why that's not working, and that's gonna, currently going to be 21 different monsters, which is an insane amount. I mean, look at these monsters, I've talked about how much I like them, I've seen the prototype, they are great, they are excellent, they pull me in, they they do have a bit of a generic tone to a degree, like I said already in my video, that it comes to down to like different forms of dragons or dogs or whatever, but overall I'm very happy with them. I think there are some solid cool ones, and then a lot of different forms of dragon lizard creatures, and it works for me, like this little beetle is different. The elephant, the Taruga, whatever his name is. Uh, yeah, Taruga over here. Different. I like the different ones. The snake. I love the snake. Some of, this, some of the optional buy ones that you can get are excellent. Plus, of course, this huge dragon is going to be the gigantic miniature. That's what you're getting in Primal. So Primal is giving you 21 different monsters to fight. That is 21 different monsters you will have to learn how to engage with, to deal with. And that number may rise if we get another monster or more optional, who knows what, as stretch goals as the game progresses. So we will see how it plays out, but 21 different encounters that you will deal with. This is where Primal wins against Monster Hunter World because... Monster Hunter World is giving you currently 11 various monsters and one mega monster. So we're going to have over here, we're going to have the 1, 7, sorry, so we have 7 plus 3 plus 1, that's 11, plus the extra extra large monster. That's going to be a total of 11 monsters in the game. That is 11 monsters you can fight, 11 different experiences. That is significantly less than the 21 you get in Primal. Now, there is going to be two different butts here. The first is that is that is before stretch goals. This is a Kickstarter from Steamforge Games. Traditionally speaking, their Kickstarters will have stretch goals. Now, we've never seen a boss hunter from them, so I have no idea what kind of stretch goals we're going to see. It is different to load up three different miniatures, sorry, ten different hero miniatures and whatnot, than it is to load up ten different bosses you will fight. So my assumption is that all in, even with those 12 we currently have right now, I'm assuming we will still see less than the 21 that we currently see in Primal. I could be wrong. If I had to hazard a guess, I'd say between 15 to 18 is going to be the final number right now but again that can definitely vary so monster variety uh monster variety primal wins hunter variety kingdom uh, uh, monster hunter world wins but in terms of monster sizing this is another one monster sizing in general or miniature sizing let's call it monster kingdom uh, i keep calling kingdom the monster monster hunter world is going to win in terms of monster sizing so monster hunter world is coming in based on the article on dicebreaker what we're seeing over here is that the core pledge is going to come at, in with a miniature that is in the, where is it? It will include everything along with four monsters and a 100 millimeter base monster. So we're seeing the min the monster sizes are going to be a 100 millimeter base monster for the extra, extra L. And we're going to see over here, the core pledge is going to have a 120 millimeter monster for the XXL. And then the largest monster, the XXXXL, is going to be 350 millimeter. So in other words, the sizes we're going to see here for those pledge levels is the L, we don't know what the L is, but we know that these are going to be 100, 120 for these three, and then 350 for this gigantic one. That is a large, large miniature. Versus Primal. Primal's coming in at 145 for their large one, meaning their Primal's larger miniature, that larger monster we see over here, is coming in at 145 millimeters, which is slightly larger than the 120 ones, of which there are three in that extra large pledge. Primal's core miniatures come in at 71 millimeters for those regular monsters, which is going to be a lot smaller than even the XL monsters. So the sizing in terms of sheer epic scale, Monster Hunter World will beat Primal in that sense. As far as the sizing of the heroes themselves, I didn't see that. Uh, I believe Primal comes in at uh, 42 millimeters for the heroes. I didn't see any information on the hero size for a Monster Hunter World. So in terms of the number of encounters, the number of different monsters, Primal will win. In terms of the sizing and scale, in terms of epicness, Monster Hunter World is currently winning based on what they are saying so far. Cards. Let's go to cards. Cards is effectively going to be a draw. Uh, Primal comes in at roughly 1,900 cards before stretch goals for the all-in pledge, and Monster Hunter World is coming in at roughly 1,800 cards. So clearly these are both very heavy card-based combat games. Clearly. 
in terms of the 100 extra cards. Again, stretch goals will ultimately be the final determinator of which one wins in terms of having more, but I don't know if either of those is particularly a win for me. They're both effectively lots of cards for your board game. In terms of the board, so Primal is going to come in with a circular track over here. This is the circular encounter, which again, I personally like it. I personally enjoy it. I've, I've seen people asking for other boards. I'd love to see different terrains in terms of different, like I'd love to see a book where you can reveal and flip through different looking boards, but it's purely a visual thing. I don't know if I particularly need it. It would just be nice. I'm down for it. Versus Primal versus Monster Hunter Rural. These names are going to confuse me. Monster Hunter Rural is coming in with two different boards that you can deal with. Two different double-sided boards. And we can see over here, this is effectively a standard uh, grid-based combat system. Now, I say standard without actually knowing how it plays out because we see a pattern of a grid of circles. Now, I don't know why that's a shift from a traditional grid. I don't know how that functionally plays out, but it looks more grid-based in the combat. We'll see how it actually plays out. I'm intrigued. Personally, I think I prefer the board of Primal. I like the feeling of tactical navigation without having to go back and forth on a map, but I haven't played Monster Hunter World, so that's just my own preference. But in terms of quantity of boards, I guess Monster Hunter World wins there. It's hard to really determine a winner in this category. This is just a difference. Let's call it a difference. In terms of track record, this is a big one. Primal is probably going to win in terms of track record. Now, Primal has one other campaign under the belt. This company, uh, Reggie Games, has one other game, which is going to be Elo Darkness. They've created Elo Darkness, which was well rated. If you look on Board Game Geek or you look wherever, this has a game that has a loyal but small following. Elo Darkness is well rated, well liked. It's a game worth paying attention to. Versus Monster Hunter World, or more specifically Steamforge Games, has a mixed track record. Their own IPs traditionally have done well. Their own IPs, God Tier, their original sports games, I don't remember what it's called, the original sports game they had, uh, Bardsung potentially, we'll have to see how it plays out. I will say I enjoyed my time with Bardsung, but I also didn't play a lot, so it's hard to give a lot, uh, very comprehensive feel of the game. But traditionally, Steamforge Games and their own IPs have done well, versus when they worked with other IPs, which very much Monster Hunter World is you're going to see mixed reviews. Uh, Dark, Dark Souls got mixed reviews. Resident Evil got mixed reviews. Um, what's the most recent one? The Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, I would say arguably negative reviews. So we are seeing definitely a mix in terms of what they have delivered. Now, I'm optimistic. I guess my own better judgment perhaps i'm optimistic about monster hunter world i am excited to see what this game does and i i like the general concept because i love primal so i am intrigued to see how this one will deliver but it is worth noting that in, in terms of ip games steamforge games does have a track record that has been spotty and it's worth paying attention to when making a decision in terms of reviews what we know about the game primal is going to have an easy win there Primal has a lot of reviews out about the game that have covered the game, that have said people who have enjoyed the game tremendously. Like I said already, almost everyone I know who has experienced the game has loved the game. And so that is a big testament to the, to the gameplay that Primal is being presented. Obviously, on the other side of the camera, if you haven't played it, the only thing you have to go by is the other are the other content creators who have played it, who have talked about it, who have said they liked it. But that it is certainly a strike in, not a strike, a check in Primal's favor. Now, Monster Hunter World is not yet out, so it's not that they don't have reviews, it's not that they don't have content, it's that they don't have content yet. And so that's something that we'll have to see how that plays out over time, as the Kickstarter approaches in April, whether people get their hands in it or are able to talk about the game, but in terms of making a decision now, in terms of deciding what to back now, it's it's a it's a neutral in Monster Hunter World's camp and a check in Primal's camp, so to speak. Uh, past that, that's really, I think that's everything. One last thing, one last thing, one-shot scenarios. This is going to be an unknown versus a check, which is Primal has one-shot scenarios. Scenarios, and Monster Hunter World has not said anything about one-shot scenarios. To me, like I said, I want to see one-shot scenarios. I like the idea of them. I like the plus, the accessibility. For the people who engage with them, it's great. For people who want the regular campaign, that's great too. But I like that variability of the game progresses. The variability of options the games give you. And that is effectively a combination, kind of, of what's going on with Monster Hunter World, what's going on with Primal. Prices are ultimately going to be fairly equitable at that all-in pledge level. Accessibility, Monster Hunter World wins. Number of Hunters, Monster Hunter World wins. Uh, the various board may or may not be a win depending on your, on your preferences. The epic scale of the miniatures, Monster Hunter World wins. The variability of the monster encounters, Primal is likely to win unless there are a ton of stretch goal monsters in the Monster Hunter campaign. Overall, I am very intrigued. 
Where I am personally is, of course, I'm keeping my all in for Primal. I've played the game. I am in, thankfully, I'm in a better position of, of having actually been able to get my hands on the game and know that's a game for me. It is obviously a harder decision when you have to make that choice on the other side of the camera. Now, I did talk about in the Should You Back It. I believe it'll hold its value just fine. I believe Primal will do very fine. Enough people like it, and it's going to be hard to get your hands on all the everything that showed up in the campaign that I am fairly, not, not fairly, I'm certain it will hold its value. The, the same can be said for Steamforge games. Their games, for better and for worse, Wars have traditionally held their value at least for a while and sometimes down the road. Monster Hunter World, being based on a popular IP, will also hold this value in the secondary market, which means if you don't mind laying off the money, you can get both of these games and then turn around and sell them and likely get your money back, if not make a profit on it, depending on when you sell, how you sell. So the if you don't mind the work involved, the safest thing to do is just get both, see which one's better, or if you love both enough, keep them. For myself, I am almost certainly backing Monster Hunter World. There are certainly things that can happen along the way that will change my mind, but I am almost certainly going to be in it because it shares enough common tones with Primal, or I should say both share enough common tones with the Monster Hunter video game genre, whatever it is, that for me, if these are the boss battlers that I'm adding to my collection, then I am down for it. I have Townsville Tussle coming, which is great, but these I can play solo. It's a very different feel. That one's more of a, a fun experience as you tackle the monster. These are more strategic card players. You sit there and optimize your way towards victory. Ultimately, they're a lot closer than I would have thought they would be. They're a lot closer. These two have a lot of overlap in what they are doing, what they are presenting, whether the reasons to back or not to back. I mean, look at this guy. Look at this hero. I, I hope the actual miniature looks half as good as the render. I hope the miniature over here looks half as good as the render. The excellent scale. And by the way, here's another one. Here's another fun thing you can do. Back both and use the sheer epic scale of the Monster Hunter World miniatures in your primal game if you really want to and if they even fit on the board. I don't even know, but that's an idea. Go for that. That's basically it. That's been your daily double for uh, videos today on Friday because I just wanted to get that information out there because, like I said already, I have a packed week coming up and I didn't have anywhere to fit this in before the primal campaign ended. I hope you found this information useful. As always, links to everything I talked about down below. And, and as always, have a good one.